Our newest and first show of the year is out and we've had some pretty good new changes. New actors, new crew, new gear, and a new way to torture our characters. With that being said, I'm going to take you through how we met our short film, Shell Shock. I think everyone could relate to this when I say that old war videos and photographs we would have to look at in history class were always genuinely creepy. Old drawings, documentaries, and real war footage are naturally creepy to me. To shoot the old footage, I brought back the very first camera I ever got back in 2014, which was the Nikon D3200. Originally, I bought this Super 8 camera in hopes that we could film it on there, but ironically the film cost more than the camera, and to have it developed to digital would just take way too long, so we just shot it with the Nikon. I did a tremendous amount of planning for the short since it was my first time working with an actual actor, so I wanted to be as prepared as possible. I made tons of concept art and storyboards, and for the most part, the storyboards matched up pretty well to the final shots in the film. For the visual effects, there were a handful, definitely less than previous shorts, but since a couple of them were so time consuming, it felt like even more, to be honest. A last minute shot that I had to fix was this one. The light coming from the balcony really bothered me since we forgot to move it when filming, and I didn't notice this until later on in the edit, so I fixed this by tracking the light in After Effects, and I created a clean frame of the windows that tracked onto it. I also added some additional background blur to make it seamless as possible, and this was done by using camera lens blur. Next were the shots of the apparition looking straight down the hallway. I did this by rotoscoping out his whole body, and to get the most accuracy I made a bunch of different masks to get precise, and I believe there are about 10 masks for each shot. I then animated the exposure to feel like it's glowing and he's straight from the video, along with some old film scratches over him using an alpha mat to fit strictly around his body. Next were the pulling into the TV shots. For both actors, we shot their arms on a separate plate, and then their heads. I keyed them out and animated the pulling back movement. I did a bunch of different animations until I got one that was actually passable and did the same technique of adding the glowing exposure. Additionally, the helmet looks really cool, like it went through an intense war, but originally it was just a cheap Halloween prop. My mom actually did some crazy work on it to turn it into an old helmet and it definitely helped sell the old video even more. This film was pretty jam packed with Easter eggs, so I hope you guys were able to find at least one of them. I Namrod Therapy Institute. Firstly, I Namrod is Dormani spelled backwards, since I didn't want to use Dormani again, so I figured why not flip it. Also, 810 pops in there as the tape number, which, if you don't know, is my birthday. Next up is in this shot. If you can't spot it, it's the haunted frame from Ornate hanging up here on the shelf. And the final one is the Dormani home security flyer that he has in his drawer. And I really love connecting these films into one huge BHP cinematic universe and definitely keep an eye out for more of these connections in our future films. You guys already know who did the music, but if not, it was done by Frank, who for once did not have to act. He used a ton of interesting sounds like a bowed bass and other metal pieces, similar to what we did in Slideshow with the bowed cymbal. It's crazy how unique of a sound you could get from just bowing an object, and I love the use of it in the score, particularly this moment here. I see you. Watch me. That's all for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this film as much as we had making it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.